new on Curiosity Stream. Just because it hasn't been done before doesn't mean you can't. Watch Earth's greatest minds forge our path to a better tomorrow. It's engineering the future and Jaws, Star Wars, The Godfather, E.T., the biggest movies have even bigger music. From King Kong to The Dark Knight. See how musicians scored Hollywood's greatest hits on great film composers' music of the movies. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Bro, gnarly. What's up, Taylor? Dude, that nerd in his electric hybrid totally blew the light while texting his yuppie friends. That's so bogus, bro. Are you hurt? Yeah, like I can't move my hips, bro. I think I broke my pelvis, man. Dude, no way. Wait. Taylor, you need to drop a dime and talk with the lawyers at the Advocates Law Firm. No way, can't afford that, bro. Your crotch is broken, man, and they don't earn any money unless they win your case. Dude, no way. You get injured, the advocates get results. Contact me today at advocateslaw.com. What's up? It's your boy, V. Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, The Podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve the Thrill Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we chose Good Fortune Burger. That's the name of a restaurant in Toronto, Canada. Uh, like almost every restaurant in North America, Good Fortune Burger, they had to modify their business plan in a bid to survive COVID, right? So they, of course, rely heavily on Uber Eats and DoorDash, but just because their menu is available doesn't mean people are going to spend their money there. And that's when they came up with the genius plan. Basically, they said, let people expense their lunch back to the place they work. Now, that sounds great, but obviously your job's not going to say, I'm not going to pay for your cheeseburger. Well, they figured that out. Here's how they changed it. They changed the name of some of their signature items so that you can turn in your receipt and have your work reimburse you for the lunch. For example, if you order a fortune burger... Well, the receipt reads, a basic steel stapler. If you get their diamond chicken burger, your receipt will say, mini dry erase board. The double your fortune burger, well, that's now a laptop stand. The veggie burger, that shows up as earphones. An order of french fries, that appears as braided HDMI cord. <laughs> if, you get, if you get a ginger beer, well, if you turn it into work, they think you got lined sticky notes. And finally, if you want to get a San Pellegrino, right? That comes up as you bought a box of ballpoint uh, ink gel pens. Oh, yeah. this is a brilliant thing. So basically, if you go through DoorDash or Uber Eats to this place, the receipt online anyway says that you bought office supplies so that you can turn that into your boss and have, as they say, the man pay for your lunch. Nice. <laughs> I like it. People are going to get fired, but it is a brilliant idea. So we toast them. We pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola. You know it's bad. Choice Friday. It's bad. Choice Friday. You know it's bad. Choice Friday. Hey, man, this is your fault. Sam, All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into the bad choices, we beam our satellites to somewhere in Seattle, Washington. Ryan Castle, are you there from your dungeon basement studio bar okay. type situation? I thought you guys were going to play the song, too. Now I know how people that call this show feel being on hold for 20 goddamn minutes. Listen, well, we, we wanted to give you extra time. <laughs> we know you just got promoted. You are now the head cheese. You're the big head hunter. Sure. We wanted to give you that extra time to do all the things we know. Right. You must be busy That's with it. And, and, and let, the, that, let that be a lesson to the young people listening that if you work hard uh, and you're kind and you hone your craft oh, yeah. um, and you hang around somewhere long enough, you too can sit on hold for 20 minutes for some dumb question with well, the men's room. No, no, this is important. We yeah. don't want to waste <laughs> actually, your time. Actually, we only had one question, but then all of a sudden we had two questions. We do have two. See? And okay. that's why we're bringing you in right now. So first of all, from earlier today, we had a hypothetical. If Mike were to poop his pants and crap himself at work, would we get the day off? You would you get the day off? Yeah, or does Mike get the day Mike, off. No, no, Mike's got to Mike go home. Runs we, the show. We he can't do anything. His pants. So let's just say on Monday he craps himself. Right? Can we all go home? See, so here's the difference between Mike and one of you. If it happens to Mike, <laughs> it's an accident and it's a tragedy. Yeah, <laughs> right. 
Because Mike would never, Mike would never do something like that intentionally. Yeah. Um, and if it happened to Mike, he'd be mortified. Yeah. Mike would certainly get the day off, Woo! but okay. we would find a way to do the show. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. So All wait, right. Mike grabs himself. And we saw oh, God, oh, Jesus, Ryan, Castle, oh. come on! Here's the here's the job. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! God, please keep going. Unbelievable! Right. Call it. You stop now talking now, okay? Uh, so here's the I've second been on the radio question. In a while. Here's here's the difference. If thrill does it. Like, I think that's probably intentional, and you definitely have to work. <laughs> You're trying to get the day off. All right. We're just seeing. You see right We're just me. seeing what it's would. It's like calling in sick, like, I don't know, dude. I don't yeah. feel very good. Like, I'm putting myself to. just trying to see what our boundaries are here. Okay, all right. So the next question, believe it or not, I believe for the first time ever, on a Bad Choice Friday, we put Nellie Hodden here up against Usher and Nia. From what we understand, the vote right now is 50 Fifty, right down. Wow! The yeah, First time we've ever had tie. it. So it's it's a it's a it's a dead tie. So we were going to leave it up to you. To oh, so would you like to tie? You would like to hear on Bad Choice Friday? Will it be Nelly Hodden here, Ryan, or Usher? And yeah, you are the deciding vote. It's an easy decision, Nelly, for sure. There you go, oh, baby. Oh, boy. Thank you, Ryan Castle. Welcome to the weekend. Here's your winner. I knew you'd hate it. On Enjoy. A bad, on a bad choice Friday. Let's give it up for Nelly. You're listening to the men's room. 99.9 KISW Seattle. New on Curiosity Stream, she was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And... What if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's Impossible Escapes, Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Well, great balls of fire, Bubba. What happened, Bilford? That crazy son of a sow blew right through that four-way stop of Main Street and plowed into my cowboy Cadillac. Your what? My pickup truck. And I'm pretty sure my leg is broken, Ted. Oh, quit your bitching, Buford, and talk with those side busters at the Advocates Law Firm. When I got busted up last month, well, shoot, they made sure those snakes at the insurance company played fair. Boy, howdy. Even that creepy so-and-so Kyle earned his keep. So if you get injured, the advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Now for all TV news all the time, it's time for TV time with Tim. And now, because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box. I'm again. The Men's Room presents TV time with Ted. Ah. <laughs> all right, your choice is today. Seth Myers. Seth Myers. Stephen Colbert. Oh! Colbert. Stephen. Is it Stephen or is it Stephen? Is it a V or PH? He's a PH. Uh, the Jimmies. Okay. Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, or Ted Smith. Is it Ted or is it late? No! That is it. It's right there in the title. All these guys have teams of professional writers going with their monologues each and every night. It is up to you to determine, is this an actual late-night joke, and from whom, or could it be a V. Ted Smith original? Chili's. Chili's is celebrating their birthday this month with a one-gallon margarita to go. Right now, kids are like, hey, that looks just like my Zoom teacher's juice box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Fallon. Yeah, I'll say Jimmy Fallon. Fallon. Chili's is celebrating its birthday this month with one gallon margaritas to go. <laughs> right now, kids are like, that looks just like my Zoom teacher's juice box. <laughs> why is everyone like, oh, like, it's a one gallon margarita box. You understand why. Yeah, and honestly, I've had a few margaritas at Chili's. I always liked them. That's what I'm saying. They're frozen. They're delicious. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, they have the pina colada, <laughs> strawberry. No, I, I'm usually a rocks guy. Oh, gotcha. So just so. when you said that, I'm ah, like, okay. what do you mean they're frozen? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't get margaritas frozen. Mm. I just remember, <laughs> yeah, like me, a buddy of mine, and my mom, when we were like, when I was like, ah, I probably had a fake ID, so I was probably like 19 or whatever. <laughs> but on Sundays, that's what we would do. He would drive out. We would the three of us would sit at Chili's and get Cadillac margaritas, nice. Southwestern egg rolls. I don't think the, margaritas uh, are a nice way to introduce people to the drinking world. When I was fourteen yeah. years old, my mom let me have a sip of hers. All right, I will never forget it. It was my first sip of alcohol other than beer, and I was like, I can do this because <laughs> I took that strong one. She's like, Miles, 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 Miles. I just kept sucking. Like, this is so good. It's like a slushy. A Canadian man who was found unconscious and tethered. So 185 pounds of marijuana in the Detroit River was sentenced on Wednesday uh, to about six and a half years in a U.S. prison. The man was nicknamed Scuba Steve, and in prison, someone would be his big daddy. I'll say that sets me. That is. That's where that name comes from, the movie Big Daddy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Scuba Steve. Scuba Steve found barely alive. Strapped to uh, three barrels or bales of marijuana. Scuba Steve. Scuba Steve. And they did that on purpose. Disney World's like a festival. Yeah. It's hard to find people. Like, you don't, you're not going to really run into them. And one year we were there, and there was a couple. The woman's in a wedding dress. So we uh-huh. start talking to her, and they're like, oh, we came straight from the wedding. And I swear to you, his name was Steve. And we yelled Scuba Steve. I don't know how to explain it. We ran into them five times. And every time <laughs> yeah. we saw me and my cousin. Scuba Steve! Scuba Steve! Scuba Steve! Probably same guy. Did, he, did he hate you by the end of it? No, yeah, they loved us. Okay. We bought him some drinks. Talk show host Dr. Oz saved a man's life this week in baggage claim area at the Newark airport. Oz snapped into action after bystanders called out, Help! Help! Is anybody here sort of a doctor? Seth Myers. Jimmy Fallon. Seth Myers. Talk show host Dr. Oz helped save a man's life this week. At a baggage claim area in Newark Liberty International Airport, Oz snapped into action after bystanders called out, Help! Help! Is anybody here sort of a doctor? <laughs> I think there's always a dark side to the, to the term Oz. Like the Wizard of Oz has mm-hmm. some scary stuff. Sure, sure. There used to be a show on HBO about prison called Oz. Oz yeah. Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, but he goes by Ozzy. Mm-hmm. He doesn't just go by Oz. Yeah. Well, you're right. He is Prince of Darkness. But he is the Prince right. of Darkness, right? But I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm just used to him being old. Snorted ants. The Senate finally started debating the $1.9 trillion relief, uh, COVID relief bill. Let's go already. In the time between the first stimulus and this one, 300 new streaming services have been created. Fallon. Yes, Jimmy. The Senate finally began debating the $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill. Let's go already. In the time between the first stimulus and this one, 300 new streaming services have been created. He's not kidding. (laughs) Uh, So, basically, The Bachelor, uh, the host of The Bachelor, Chris Harrison, has been in some trouble, right? What is going So, it's one of those things, all right? And I mean this honestly. So, for the last month or so, whatever. So I do research for the show, go online. I keep seeing them pop up. I know there's something going on, and I'm almost proud of myself. I have no idea well, what the hell my, it's about. My question is, do you know, Ted, even, I, I know you don't watch the show, but it's news. What, what Do you know what the, what he said? Is something he said? Is something he did? He, I have he no he, idea. I just I'm know. assuming if you're a racist, it's got to come like out of your mouth. I there was racist stuff against one of the, got brought up about one of the contestants. So basically, they just didn't, this is the first uh, the back. Black Bachelor. Right. So they just didn't address it. Okay. All right. Am I right on that, Mike? From what I've heard, one of the contestants did a photo shoot, like, not terribly long ago, that was in, like, the Antebellum South, or it was, like, an, it had an Antebellum-themed party or something like that. All right. Photos came out. They they go to Chris about it, and I think he he took the route of, you know, let's let's give her the benefit of the doubt sort of thing. Did not did not condemn it. Sure. And so I think people are coming out about it, but again, same as you guys have been looking for the information, and it's patchy everywhere yeah okay. i think more right i think more people were just upset it wasn't addressed on the show or okay so it's more that it is okay, okay. but either right. way right he said he was stepping down from the show then he did an interview with michael strahan so this is him apologizing but this is basically i just threw it in there sorry uh <laughs> this is basically <laughs> sorry this is basically what i think is the best way to say nothing 
and not apologize. Right. I am an imperfect man. I made a mistake, and I own that. I believe that mistake doesn't reflect who I am or what I stand for. I am committed to the progress, not just for myself, also for the franchise. I am not a victim here. I made a mistake, and I own that. Racism, oppression, these are big dynamic problems, and they take serious work, and I am committed to that work. I, I think we've had this, or go ahead. So we do have it serious. In a February 9th interview, he said that there should be, quote, a little grace, a little understanding, a little compassion uh, for, for the contestant there, adding that things are viewed in a different, quote, unquote, lens in 2021 rather than 2018. Right. So, but that's what he's in trouble for. Yeah. I so, mean, me personally, like, well, it, I don't, <clears throat> his statement is, I don't want to get involved. That's basically what he's saying. And I get it because it's not about him. It doesn't even really involve him. It's just, this is happening at your workplace. Understandably, you're the host. People are going to ask you questions, but I have no problem with the statement that. I just right? think he's not saying anything. I, it, we've he's had this not. Say, wait, I, we, I, I'm just one of those people like, if you want to apologize for something, say you're sorry. If you don't, don't. I would agree with you normally, <laughs> but in this case, it's not something you wanted to address anyway because it doesn't actually involve him. So I think his whole thing, he was trying to be hands yeah. off with that with the first one, right? Because this does not involve him, but understandably, if they're going to ask him, it's obviously a delicate situation. Well, they, they put him on ice but, for that, right? But I mean, but I mean, so he backed off, but it's like, look, he didn't want to deal with this, but it doesn't involve him. So I would talk to, I guess, the, the woman that started, whatever the case, like, talk to her. Yeah, well, you know, she's well, like, the one that would have to I think it. the other problem is, too, is The Bachelor does not have the best history. Okay. No, it right. does. Right. It like, does it, for sure. It's a very white show. There was the other girl that had all the white lives matter, sure. and they were like, oh, it's a fishing thing. Like, no, well, he they just started this after people said right. he doesn't life, cast. So. He doesn't cast the people either. But but the, uh, who was it? Was it, uh, I think it was Ryan Reynolds, maybe, and Blake Lively? They got oh. married on a plantation many, yeah. many years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They came out and just said, like, that was bad. I'm sorry. Sure. We didn't know. <laughs> you know yeah. Like, I mean, no one gave him crap. I mean, they just said, like, oh, it's Ryan Reynolds and whatever. And no, I hear you saying with this, and, and, but I'm, I don't know what he has to apologize for. He didn't say anything wrong the first time. Like, guy, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not, I'm, in this case, I'm just not the person responsible. You know, if they came yeah. to say, why did Hair Club have the black face on? He didn't. But if they were to ask us, yeah, like, I, I don't know. You know, I work here. But you have to ask him. I have nothing to do with the situation right. that you're, you're, you know, that's all. So his apology, you're right. He didn't say anything, but like, what is he going to apologize for? Like, I still don't want to talk about it. Well, that's like, what he should have said. Basically, afterwards, they come back to Strahan. I have his quote. <laughs> Strahan. I just like Michael's, Strahan. Michael Strahan. Yeah, because he was doing the interview. Oh, oh goes, gotcha, gotcha. His apology is his apology. But I felt like I got nothing more than a surf response from any of it. Only time will tell if there's any meaning behind his words. I should have put that in there. Straight yeah. just he just sounds annoyed with the whole thing. Oh, of course. He's like, ah. He probably doesn't even want to be. He doing probably doesn't want to be. He's getting the, right. like, God damn he's, it. He's getting the uh, Kimmel treatment on this one. Like, really, guys? Me? Yep. Me? <laughs> me? You want me to do this? I work with people that might watch it. I, you right. know I don't. You Right. Like, I'll do other things. <laughs> don't we have like four or five other reporters? How do you show? think that meeting went? Yeah, call Stray Hand in. Yeah, you're going to talk to the Bachelor host. Like, wh what? Well, they would give that to Lauer or somebody. You know, like, Here, Matt, you do it. Well, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just straying. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> straying at some point, probably like, but, uh, oh, I, I have to do it. Yeah, exactly. Goes to the Seriously, Bachelor. Like, why yeah. me? The why Bachelor. Me? I'm the guy. Okay. Great. Well, because women find you attractive. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Uh, this just sucks. A reporter in San Francisco, they're doing, uh, basically they're reporting on how uh, cars are getting stolen. Yeah. Our car break-ins. Then they got robbed at gunpoint. <laughs> on the air? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. So they're doing a live, live report. Earlier this well, week, you brought us a story out of San they, Diego it about the live shooting. And now right, it's it this. wasn't, I, I take that back. It wasn't live, but they're, do, they're like getting ready for the report. All right. A car, car pulls up. Three guys jumped out. One had a gun. He put it in my face and said, we're taking the camera. Like, what are you going to do? <laughs> sell it to another TV station? Call, like, the Fox affiliate and go, like, guys, I gripped the CBS guy's camera. No, man. It's about you exert control. Well, in uh, Baltimore, Homicide, the show Homicide used to film in Baltimore. And they filmed, they were trying to be accurate, so they went to East Baltimore. They leave the crap out. They come back the next day. It's all gone. But they're met by the guy that kind of runs the drugs there. 
and say, you didn't ask permission. I'm not selling your crap. I don't need your money. I just want to establish that. If oh, you, I see. So, seriously, so like they would clear it with him that they could film on these days just to make sure he didn't have any of his guys out. That guy, caught they, on he ended up producing The Wire. <laughs> yeah, probably. Same guy. Right. Well, the funny thing is, is there was a chip in the camera. So they found, they ended up getting the camera. Nobody was right. hurt. Uh, Still, so, man. No word on the suspects. Yeah, I mean, that too. I mean, that <laughs> we're taking the camera. All well, I mean, it all right. used to be, if you're a member of the press, everyone just gave you, mm-hmm. you know, your space. You're an impartial jury. You're there. You're just covering something, right? Yeah. Last couple of years, it's been like, yeah, whatever. Give me your press badge, too. They have the best <laughs> family films. The quality is so good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, what are you going to do with the damn thing? Man, what, what did you shoot? Is I this your is iPhone? It, this, is not mean, amateur this, por- is. this is not amateur porn of you and your wife. You got this done by somebody. Is oh, this HD? Oh, oh, no, no, no. I stole a camera from a <laughs> TV station so I could do this. I think part of it is just you're just out. That's you're like prime of opportunity, something. right? You see a fancy camera, like, you don't know. Let's take it. Right. Yeah. It, which I'm not excusing it at all. But no, we no, get no. it. Try to figure out what you do with it. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. This one hurts. You guys been up on the uh, on the drama of the only couple I care about. Oh, Megan and uh, Harry. Correct. I have remarkably avoided most of it. I just brought it up. You were out. I was in the commercial break, and I just made a comment about it. Right. Which was not oh, appropriate yeah, yeah, for yeah. air, but I swear to God, I just brought this yeah. up. So, uh, in a sit-down interview with Oprah, uh, basically, now there's stuff coming out that Meghan Markle was boiling, bo- boiling people. Bullying people. <laughs> I like boiling people better. You're like, I am intrigued. Yeah, now we've reverted back he to... He wouldn't make a great garbage. stock for soup. Uh, so... Uh, Meghan Markle says the royal family has an active role in perpetuating falsehoods against her and Prince Harry. Now, I know some of you don't care about royal weddings, but you got to keep in mind. We know that you do. I do. Look, you know what? I'll send. I, I'll post the picture tonight of the of the magnet I have on my fridge. I thought you, you took you, it down. Yeah, you, you said you were done with it. You were angry two weeks ago. You were angry about this whole thing. <laughs> well, because I started believing the damn queen. And that's my fault. Yeah. All right. The so where do you stand it. now? Now I know I, I know what's going on, but I know no details. I know interviews have been given. There so is gonna, what it is, but I read nothing about it. They're gonna so Megan and Harry are gonna give this interview. They're yeah. like, look, we don't want to be royals. Right. That's what I was pissed it's about. It's aired, right? Or I, think it's it's aired, I think it's airing this weekend. Oh Jesus. Yeah, Sunday night CBS. Oprah, Oprah, Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey got nine million dollars from CBS for that interview. I yeah. heard too. Nine million. Well, you gotta keep million. in mind though. You know, his mother, right, Princess Diana, yeah. like, the queen was not very friendly to her. No, she didn't so like her either at all. Right, so that's kind of why... It was I, the I w- press. Right, so this is what it's kind of looking like again. That's why I'm back on Team Meghan and Harry. Okay. Because I'm, right, I'm like, yeah, they are running a, a, a smear campaign just because they don't want to stay there and hold the crown, hold the titles. Well, look, you also have to remember that. And no, I know wait, legally, wait, wait. I asked you this when you were angry and you felt the exact opposite. As I far did. as... Just say, look, man, it's the royal. Look, I don't care who you are. You are who you are. You're a human being. I understand you get bo- uh, born into the royal family. But if you're someone like him and you, I don't want to say smart enough because that's not the right term, but you are self aware enough that maybe this is not for you, I don't feel like you should get this much grief. A couple weeks ago, look, 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 you, look, you, look, you look, ran, but he's look, not royal look, now, Ted told me. Now, you know what? Now, you know what, they, sudden, you know what they call me? Yeah. A foot flopper. <laughs> and I just fucked. Yeah, good. I thought you flew. Good. If, you, if, if your mom died uh, in a, a tornado, swept her up and killed her, right? All right. Would you be a tornado chaser? <laughs> Probably not. So, of course he's not going to like these people. Of yeah. course he's not going to like the paparazzi, the press, the all these people. Are do, they're doing the same thing to his wife that they did to his mother. Yeah. His mother's not around anymore because of it. They were chasing her out of a hotel, mm-hmm. trying to photograph her. And they hit a pole in the tunnel, and she's done. She's dead. I was also so, just, re- I was just, and you're right. All right, I stood here. I, you know what? I am wrong, and I am Glad sorry. The refrigerator. No, hey, I am sorry. Okay, I respect I was wrong. you coming back around, but I do distinctly remember you saying I pulled the magnet off my fridge. Now, look, the royal family means nothing to me, but I do care about my man Ted. So the idea of you saying you pulled down their magnet that that kind of blew my mind. Like, what is going well, on? She's so excited to have an American princess. <laughs> Doesn't help that she's American. <laughs> No, what I'm saying, it was exciting. And that ain't the problem, princess. brother. No, I, I said American, not Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's part of it. Either way, that airs Sunday night. 
on CBS. That should be a pretty interesting thing, if you care at all. I thought it had already happened because I'm already hearing so much about it. Like, oh, like, no, no. I don't like, read up on it. But So the interview hasn't even aired yet. No, it's aired Sunday. All of this is going on, and no one actually knows what anyone says. I mean, you have an idea of what they're going to talk about. It tells you the right. juice about this interview. I mean, my God, man. It's like the Super Bowl. I figured it already happened. Well, some of this stuff is like uh, anybody in this room after five beers. It leaked a little bit. <laughs> it's a wonderful analogy, Ted. Thank you. I got you back, brother. <laughs> Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You are listening to The Men's Row. New on Curiosity Stream, she was a loving wife, a devoted mother. She also stole atomic secrets and gave them to the Soviets. Meet the woman whose deception kick-started the Cold War on the spy who stole the atom bomb. And what if they catch you? Then I shall be shot. They're coming! Come back! Relive history's most death-defying escapes. It's impossible escapes. Civil War. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are twenty dollars, just a dollar sixty-seven a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. Fiddlesticks! What, Wilbur? We just got hit and I think my back has all been out of shape. You gotta talk with those whippersnappers at the Advocates Law Firm. They're the best injury lawyers around. What? Pipe down, Clarence! Abner's telling me about the lawyers and the advocates. So what happened to you, Abner? I was walking across the street with the light when some young punk came screeching around the corner. I lost a toe. What? Shut it, Clarence! If you get injured, the advocates get results. AdvocatesLaw.com This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. As we continue to listen, learn, and grow, we are amplifying black voices and perspectives in an effort to start a new COVID-19 vaccine conversation. We're sharing stories intended to help us navigate this unprecedented time together and to co-create solutions in support of the black community. Hear these stories at WeConsiderWA.org. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, away we go, Nashville. A man tells police he is in his bed when found asleep behind the wheel. Meanwhile, a drunk driver crashes into a drunk friend in a ditch. And that is not ideal. Missouri man learns valuable lesson during turkey mating season. I'm not sure why anyone would buy a bottle of fresh air for $100 for any reason. And a man tries to get a date with a girl on a train by telling her he's Satan. It's time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my cock. Hey, right, top story. We got a police report of, uh, in Nashville about a man that was sleeping behind the wheel of a running car. They found the car and confirmed the report just as the man was waking up. When they finally got him out, the man had slurred speech and reeked of alcohol. And when going through the field sobriety test, they asked the man where he was, to which he replied, in my bed. What if he's homeless and lives night, in his car? Night, 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 night time. He was arrested and faces several charges. I don't know how whacked out this guy had to be to be that out of it. Now, maybe it's just because he was freshly woken up. Yeah. You know, yeah. they're going through the, through the questions, you know, what day is it? What's yeah. your name? Where are you at? All that good, fun stuff. But, boy. Uh, in other news, more DUI fun in Nashville. A woman drunk driving had the misfortune of running her car into the ditch, luckily removing her from endangering others. Looking for an out from the situation, she called a friend to help her out, which they agreed to. Unfortunately for the both of them, the friend crashed into her car because they were drunk as well. When yeah. police got to the scene, they found the bull drivers had a blood alcohol level that was twice the legal limit. Wow. Twice. Okay. Twice. Come twice. get me. Okay. Yeah, girl. I'm on my way. You'll know when I get there if I'm going to hit you. Danger, pull the car over. <laughs> I wonder if they were just sitting there to the side of the road like, you know what, we're going to jail. Let's just pop this six pack and just wait for the cops. You start. might as well because you're definitely going to jail. That's right. <laughs> I don't know where I'm at, but I'm sure point nine somewhere around there. Oh, nine. A man in the UK is behind bars and video games are to blame. He had previously been serving a 17-year sentence in an open prison in the area and managed to escape. He lay low for, a mu- uh, for months and uh, was classified as wanted by police. But the result of the new Call of Duty game is what drew him out. He and a friend uh, changed direction after seeing police while out on a mission to get the game and drew suspicion from the officer, and he was arrested and taken back to the prison. Because you want to get a video game. Right. And you're there with your friend, meaning your friend could have just picked up the video game. Send your buddy. Come on, man. I mean, come on. I didn't know that open prisons were a thing, though. They exist, but it's not an honor system. He will not be in that prison anymore. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're low security prisons. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are. Right. They're all over West Virginia. It's basically. Mm-hmm. But apparently, this, it, he escaped like months ago and just went underground. Yeah, and, November. You know, Look, yeah. Every, everybody I knew learned how to swim at the jail because they had a pool. Oh. 
Interesting. Yeah, and they were felons. Right. Yeah, well, I, that's why they were in there. Yeah, I mean, that's they were. <laughs> but they were also your lifeguard and your swimming instructor. Right, there you go. It's just, yeah. And then not to mention... And he's from New Jersey and he's hairy and he likes hanging out by the pool. And the chlorine level's just right, kids. This goes back to what we were talking about, which is, you know, it, we don't condone that you're going to do this, but at least be smart about it. If you've broken out of prison and now you're going to go get yourself a video game, do not do a double take and then switch direction as soon as a cop shows up. even worse. Right, right. I am innocent. Right. It's not technically running, but now he's really got to go ask you, hey, what's the problem? You just don't like cops or do you have something to hide? What's going on? Both. Dumbass. Still in the UK, a woman found out that no good deed goes unpunished. We talked about this a little bit earlier today. The woman was pampering her husband who was enjoying playing video games and decided to spice things up a little bit. Feeling sexy, the woman came into the room and was playing. Uh, he was playing games in and decided to give her husband a little strip tease. She got about as far as showing a little leg for a man when it was brought to her attention that he was live streaming his game and she had just given his followers a show that they hadn't anticipated. He'll have more followers now. Right? Just waiting for that next one to show up. They said he had 200 at the time it happened. Now that story's out, he'll have like 10,000. Right. He's definitely got more followers. Bunch of I thirsty would. people waiting for his wife to show back up. So what, like his face appears in like a little square someplace Correct. where you so can the, see him? So, the, so way the, stream, the, wa- yeah. Yeah, the way that the stream goes is that it picks up what you actually see on your computer screen screen, and that streams it to, to everybody who's following. And then what a lot of people will do is that they will set up a separate camera, usually a webcam, and then they'll kind of have themselves a little commentation box okay, right gotcha. there in the, okay. in the bottom right. corner. So I can't was, believe anyone can even see that as small as it would be. I'd be playing the game. You know? Uh, you, you can see. Okay. you got to really be paying attention, though, in, right. in order to, 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 you know, people dream of situations like this. It's like watching the news, waiting for something weird to happen. Right, right. It's eventually gonna happen, but you're never really ready for it when it does. So I don't. But it's great if it happens. Eh, amen to that. Uh, there's a company in the UK that's drawing controversy. They're called Coast Capture Air, and true to their name, they're in the business of bottling their coastal air each and every day and putting them up for sale online for the equivalent of 105 American dollars. Come on, man. I mean, come on. They actually are finding a clientele in the form of people from countries that have questionable air quality who inhale the fresh air as a daily routine. Oh, that's it. Like, I never blame the people that put the thing for sale. It's that people are dumb enough to buy it. Yeah. The pet rock. Who would do that? Well, the guy that made millions of dollars selling pet rocks. I will, say this, the guy that I, did I will say this, though. When my mom came out here for the uh, very first time, yeah. it's all she talked about for four days. How clean the air was? I cannot believe how fresh the air was. Well, oh, she's yeah. from West Virginia in the cold yeah, fields. Sure. It's like, it was just about the air. I cannot believe. Would she spend 105 bucks if I you said, Mom? I cannot believe how good the water tastes. I cannot believe how fresh the air is. No kidding. Yes. I swear to God. It was like for four days, and I'm like, Mom, you had the greatest <laughs> piece of salmon ever. Right. Quit talking about the air that's free <laughs> and the water. Or not pay for. Or like, I took you to a two hundred dollar dinner last night. <laughs> All you talking about is the air. Like, you got some of the best food you ever had. Yeah, but now you know you can sell her that air. Right. I swear to God, she talked about it for days. They actually, say that they're trying. And to then like, when you go back there, you realize she's right. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they're like trying to change the air quality of their home area. They buy enough of it and just kind of release that air into the air. Ah, we got air. Don't try to give so uh, much credit, Mike. We're lucky. We got fresh air out here. We do. Fresh air. I didn't realize how lucky I was. All righty. Sorry, God. <laughs> lucky SOB. Lucky. Yeah. And that is it for headlines with that. Mike Hawk is out. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Lovely uh, Taryn Daly is up next. Thank you for joining us on a positive Friday. We'll see you on Monday for a negative Monday. Yes, indeed. Real negative, real Monday. In the meantime, we be all about this bitch. So until Monday, please do what you do best. And for Aletha's sake, stay beautiful. The men's room has been taped before a live studio audience. Wardrobe and makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man. A double flush production.